Hey guys, Quiv the Lazy Geek here and today I want to look a bit more at the autofocus options that are, that are not actually related directly to autofocus uh, but affect autofocus um, and so we're going to have a look at that and how it works. So the first thing we want to do and let me share my screen with you guys is we want to go into the options and you can see we have the annotate image um, option here. We want to turn it on. It's going to make the pictures appear black and white, but that's normal. Um, and then take an exposure and turn on the uh, star detection. And you can see here the stars that have been detected from that particular exposure. Um, and now I'm going to change some options and see how my detection is affected. You can see that in those image options, uh, we have things like the auto stretch factor, the black clipping, um, annotate image, which we just looked at, the Bayer image, the Bayer HFR, unlinked stretch, star sensitivity and noise reduction. So first things first, let me show you a bit what the auto stretch factor does. Because one of the things to understand with autofocus and Nina is that the star detection operates on stretched images and by stretched I mean they had had their histogram adjusted like the screen transfer function in PixInsight. So if I put instead of 0 0.15 0 0.3 and take an exposure we should see a much brighter image and let's see that in a couple of seconds. And here we are the image is much uh, brighter. So what's been happening here is that a lot of the smaller si stars have been uh, detected thanks to that. But look at some of the issues there. This should not have been detected. This is noise. This, uh, the HFR is artificially too big because you can see it encompasses more than the, the star. Uh, this is noise as well. So immediately we start having trouble there. And this is why in my li light polluted zone here in Tokyo, um, I put it, the default is 0 0.2, I typically put it at 0 0.15 and that gives me typically better results. It's more conservative in terms of uh, noise to star detection. So you can see how big of an impact this can have. Now I've taken another exposure, we can see now that stars, still smaller stars are detected but we're in a much better position. We don't detect things that are obviously noise um, except maybe this, no this is an actual star so we're good. Um, so this is working pretty well uh, with my 0 0.15. Another factor is the black clipping, which is how much you're clipping the, the blacks from the left side of the histogram. The default is minus 2.8. Um, I put it at minus 1.5 for my light polluted area. Um, if I put it back to minus 2.8, we can see how that looks like. I don't think, honestly, we'll see a huge difference, uh, but hey, we can, uh, we can test that and uh, experiment. Uh, on our own. And we see fewer stars have been detected. However, at the same time, the background looks a bit more, uh, less random, a bit smoother, right? So that means that we should have less fake detection of noise as a star. So this is not bad at all. And um, I'll, I'll actually, th I think that my minus 1.5 might have been a bit too aggressive. I'll put it at minus 2 going forward. So I think that's not, a, not too bad of an idea. Let's see how it looks like at minus two to see how this has affected our star detection here. And I think this is a good compromise. The background is less smooth, but I think it avoids a lot of the wrong star detection or noise detection as star, while at the same time expanding the number of stars that are uh, identified within that, uh, that background. So you can see how this is these two factors affect star detection and by extension they affect the autofocus. Another thing that affects autofocus is the debayer settings there. We have uh, three options there. If I, the debayer image, and this will only uh, affect color cameras and it so happens that this camera is a color camera, so perfect. Um, I'm gonna turn off annotate image temporarily uh, no, I'll keep it on for the moment. But let's say the bare image and the bared HFR are actually two options that are different. The bare image means that the image that will be displayed here, unless you have annotate image set to uh, on, will be in color. So your your image from the color sensor is the bare to present a color image. 
it's only for display purposes and when you have it set to on then you are able to set the Bayard HFR and that means that the HFR and star, uh, star detection will use the Bayard image instead of uh, the Bayard image and for a color sensor I would always suggest to keep that to on. So the Bayer image affects the display, it affects the star detection actually. The Bayer HFR affects the HFR calculation after the star detection. So it's quite involved in terms of difference. And overall, you just want to keep those on. And the most important of the bunch here is unlinked stretch. Unlinked stretch is probably my biggest contribution to Nina for color sensors for OSC cameras. Uh, with it, let me turn off annotate image here and go back to, uh, to this screen. I'm going to take one exposure and we're going to see how it looks like in color. Okay, and here we are. We can see that the background is a bit greenish, right? Which is the usual stuff I would expect in a light polluted area like here. The needle galaxy that is the very top at my of my frame is a bit yellowish. So we see everything in color. Now let's turn off unlinked stretch. And I think this unlinked stretch is pretty unique in capture software for OSC sensors. Um, and once I've turned it off, you'll see the big difference that it makes. This is now my image in a light polluted zone with the unlinked stretch turned off. There's almost nothing visible and you can see that the star detection will be very inefficient because the contrast with the background is terrible. And uh, when I was using SGP, uh, I don't think you could have an unlinked stretch. I don't know whether you can now, but when I built that in Nina, it was pretty much unique at the time. And it makes a huge, huge difference, not, not only for display, but also for star detection, HFR computation and autofocus. So you definitely want to keep those three settings on if you have a color sensor. If you have a monochrome sensor, they can be on, they can be off, it doesn't matter, so just keep them on, uh, just in case somehow in the future you switch to an OSC sensor. Okay, now we have two settings that are very difficult to explain because their effect can vary quite a bit. It's star sensitivity and noise reduction. And my star sensitivity is currently high. I'm gonna put it to highest um, and turn back annotate image and we can see how that's going to affect my star detection. And it's probably going to be a bit too aggressive uh, for my um, light polluted star sky. Or actually, no, my, my code is pretty good at rejecting uh, wrong selection of stars. So we can see it looks like this with my annotation. Um, let's put this to normal star sensitivity and take an exposure and see how it's affected. Depending on your sensor, especially for DSLRs, the difference is uh, staggering. So you can see a bit fewer stars have been detected. So this affects the number of stars that are detected and it also affects like noise detection. It could wrongly detect uh, stars as uh, noise, sorry, as stars. So that's something to keep into account when you're doing star sensitivity adjustments here. The noise reduction is prior to the start detection as part of the routine we do a Gaussian no noise reduction or a medium no median noise reduction. So you have multiple methods here, normal, high and highest, they're all Gaussian noise reductions. They work well on cooled sensors that have very few hot pixels. And um, you can test again like normal noise reduction with highest star sensitivity. Let's see how that affects my uh, my star detection. You know, so that's one thing to kind of play with along with the stretch factor. And you can see the stars that have been de detected are now a bit different. So it, it can help to play around with those settings. Um, the median noise detection is recommended for DSLRs and uncooled sensors or for any sensors that have a lot of hot pixels uh, because it will, it takes a bit longer to actually analyze the frame and to process the frame during autofocus. So you need to, especially if you have a slow imaging computer, this can affect your autofocus time. Um, but I, I find it very useful to reject uh, median pixels. And that's actually 
Um, the reason why it's so long is that it's a convolution matrix uh, that's being applied, whereas there are various optimizations that I implemented for the uh, Gaussian noise reduction. Um, okay, so that's like in terms of those settings. Now, before I finish looking at those settings and I uh, wish you a good day or good night or good evening, um, I want to say one more thing. You want to play with those settings where you, when you are close to best focus, but also where when you are kind of like far from best focus. So in one of my last videos, I saw that I want to keep my focus around 150 steps um, mechani mechanical focus steps from the best focus. So let's try to move outwards by that amount to look at my stars. How do the stars look like when I'm so far away from focus? Will a few stars still get detected by my uh, routine? And here we are and you can see that with my current settings I'm detecting noise and not stars. So this is not correct and I'll want to change my settings uh, maybe to put it back to like minus 1.5 here or I want to do like star sensitivity is um, our noise reduction lower start sensitivity is high you know things like that to see whether I can change this so that my um, star sensitivity and my settings will detect stars that are out of focus. If I never am able to detect stars that are out of focus, it means that I need to, have to change my autofocus criteria to stay closer to my area of best focus. I think I might have moved actually a bit too far out uh, here. Okay, and I've changed my settings and I think the biggest uh, one that was useful for this was noise reduction to highest and my black clipping to be lower. This is actually something I did not expect. Uh, going forward, I'll keep my black, black clipping to minus 2.8 because the background is so much smoother. And the result of those settings here is that once I'm even super far out of focus, obviously you can imagine how difficult it is to detect stars in such a configuration with such a, a high HFR, I really moved too far. I think I pressed this button uh, one more time or than I expected to. Um, and now we can see that even with a star like this, I can still detect it, which is very, very good. Um, and so you want to probably not go to such extreme lengths as I am. So I'll probably go back because I know that they work fairly well to my high and high kind of settings for my particular setup. But this is something to remember. You want to check when you are in focus, but also within the out of focus tolerance that you have for your particular focus or settings, whether those settings will work well. And I recommend slightly lower auto stretch factors than the default 0 0.2 for light polluted area. Whereas if you're in a very dark area, you can um, put that to 0 0.2. 225 for example or even 0 0.3 I now recommend minus 2.8 for black clipping I realized that uh, black clipping might give a little bit of an advantage uh, at first but um, it's really dodgy when you get further away from focus I rec recommend keeping the debayer settings to on annotate image in normal use you can keep it off it's just for diagnostics and star sensitivity and noise reduction, it's really up to you and your setup and your testing with uh, your uh, frame while you're testing your autofocus. Now, typically the default settings will work relatively well and there's no issues, but you can actually uh, enhance those settings and improve them so that even if you found your, find yourself focusing from very far out of focus as a starting point, you can still get good results because you have adjusted those, those settings to get the best possible um, uh, results. And I think that's it for this video. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you like this video, if you found it useful, click like and click subscribe. Um, you can also leave comments, uh, stuff you want me to cover, suggestions, etc. Uh, below. And uh, thank you so much for watching. Talk to you next time.